somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah somebody come on shout hallelujah hallelujah if you ain't gave no praise all day somebody just shout hallelujah that's the highest praise you can't get no higher than that hallelujah I want, I want, I want to say this, that no matter where you are, no matter what you've been up against, there's a name that you can call on, and that name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get to a place in time in your life where you're saying that God something in my life got to break you call on that name called that name Jesus there's no other name that's greater than that name you got you you got you got people with names out there you got they use the hey Zeus hallelujah but come on somebody that name is 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 unique it's the original when we sing that song death could not Pastor Charles, some people don't understand that when we say death could not hold you. Now, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, Prophet is April, is that when we say that, we got to understand that the same thing, the same way he got up, we got to know in our heart that we can get up. Somebody say, it can't hold me down. So, I, I want to give just a little bitty piece of something. And the keynote speaker for today is Pastor Charles. I don't believe you're going to be here next week, is you? He's, he's, he got to do his uncle's home going down in Indianapolis. And he'll be down there. But I want to let you know one thing about the goodness of the Lord. Mm. that God has not forgot somebody need to give God praise right now God has not forgot and, and, and here, here's the thing right here's the thing right here we didn't read our traditional scripture but he talks about forgiveness and I love that scripture Deacon if you will put that I'm going to break some down for you then I'm going to give us our speaker for this morning Hallelujah. God bless you, Tawanda. That's Tawanda. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I don't want to call you my auntie. My, my, my auntie I don't want to call her by her nickname. Hallelujah. Thank Rosada. God bless you. I ain't get to say anything to you earlier, but God bless you. I, I love the fro. I love that. Amen. I love the fro. <laughs> you taking me back right there. Hallelujah. Uh, she, she is. She is. Oh, amen. 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 But look, I, I want to read this. I want to break something down for you here. Because nothing happens until you use your sword. <laughs> nothing happens until you use your sword. And so it's something about the sword that we have in our mouth. We can build up and we can tear down. We can speak life and we can speak death. But the power is in your tongue. Ooh, hallelujah. So that, that's why I, I was talking to Pastor Terry the other day before I read this. And I told her, I said, I can never wear his shoes. But I can walk in his steps. I can never wear Jesus' shoes, but I can walk in his steps. Because the Bible says the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. I can. Yes, Lord. I, I love it because I love this scripture. It, it, and every time I read it, I wish I can go in on it. And since we have just a few extra minutes before Charles come up, I want to just read it and break it down. Verse 1 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Here's the thing. He didn't highlight himself. <laughs> he said, And Jesus answered and said unto us, Have faith faith 
in God. And, and so, 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 so you see that, you see that now, you see that, you see that. So, so the, the important thing is we know that when we call on that name of Jesus, hallelujah, he's part of that trinity, but he's saying here, St. Mark's 11 and 22, have faith in God. 23 says, he, he, he continues to speak. He said, for verily I say unto you, somebody point to yourself, say me, that whosoever
your heart desire. He said, whatsoever things when you pray, believe that you receive them and you should have them. So you're saying, I ain't got it, but it's mine. I don't have a thing, but it's mine. I don't have the, a dime in the bank, but it's mine. Hallelujah. I'm claiming the things that I don't have, but it's already mine. So, and you start going around and telling people like, look, stop posting stuff. And you'll know who's your haters. Post that car you want. And talk about it. Hallelujah. And they're going to call you and say, you got it already? That's what you got? That's what you got? And you start saying, yeah, that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get that right there. That's my dream car. This is my dream house. Hallelujah. And whatever it is that you want, just start posting it. A lot of us on social media, just start letting people know, this is what I'm claiming in 2022. Hallelujah. And then here it is right here. Verse 25 says, Am I, no, 24 said, therefore, I say unto you, what things ever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. It's yours. Somebody says, already mine. But here's the catch. Somebody say, why is there a catch? <laughs> See, because every time you'll, you, you'll get those pre-approvals in the, in the mail, and sometimes they'll say, you, you, you can, you, you've been pre-approved, and sometimes we'll miss it. They'll have a the pre-approved in small letters. And you'll miss that part. You're thinking you already approved because some of them say approved. And you'll go there to get the car, but then yet your credit ain't lining up. And so now you ain't got the car. You telling me I came down here for nothing? Or sometimes they'll give you the car, but you can't afford the payments because the interest rate is like way up there. So here's the thing it says And when you stand praying, forgive. So you're telling me that all of this faith I put into moving that mountain, nothing will happen if I'm harboring unforgiveness. If I'm harboring unforgiveness. And the thing is, we harbor it and we wonder why we can't move on. He says, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Somebody say, but. Mm. Now there's a claw. I've forgiven them. But he's telling, see, because some, some of us, we can come up here and ask for forgiveness, and God will do that. But the main reason why we repeat that is because we cannot let go. We, can, we, we cannot let go of forgiving. So here's, what, here's, here's, here's the thing right here. This is why we repeat that. It says, but, somebody say but. but. If ye do not forgive, Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. So, Pastor Charles, I can't ask for nothing I can't give. I don't think some of y'all hear me. I can't ask for nothing I cannot give. If, 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 if I'm asking for unforgiveness, but I can't do it, what good is it for me asking for something I cannot give? God wants you to give wholeheartedly. If you're going to forgive, you got to let that thing go so that it can be over. Somebody give God praise. I just wanted to just break that down. I, I do it every once in a while. I do it every once in a while, and I just want everybody to stand to their feet at this time. I've asked Pastor Charles, who's always ready, that even if he didn't know last week, and I asked him today, he'll be like, I got something ready. 
I, I got, I, I'm ready, Pastor. And he'll go right there in his Bible, in his tablets. Well, all I know is that he's studying, praying, and, you know, I can't call him at 8 o'clock in the morning because he's on the prayer line praying, and Sunday morning he's praying, and then right soon he get here on Sunday morning, I don't know, I don't have to do anything like I used to. He, he have pushed my hands out the way and taken over the slot so when Deacon Davis come, Deacon Davis can run all of the media. And this great man of God, I, I thank him and you know, we have preached right behind each other. There's no competition in neither one of us. He has an awesome way of preaching, and he comes from a long life line of preaching. Grew up in the church and can preach on just about, oh, just say anything that in the Word of God. And that I can say he's anointed to do the job. I know that his steps are ordered by the Lord and called to do a purpose. And great man of God, I can say a thousand things about Pastor Charles, but a thousand things just wouldn't be enough to say about him. And he's singing, he's a preacher, he's a he just associate pastor of this house and he's just doing a great job and I want everybody that's watching live I want you to put those hands clapped and I want y'all to put your hands together come on put your hands together as we receive a word from God from Pastor Charles somebody say God bless Pastor Charles come on and give God praise thank you very much praise the Lord that is, that is just beautiful. Thank you, Pastor Connell. Love you for that, bro. Amen. Amen. God is so good. He's so amazing. I don't know about you all, but I came excited today. I'm always excited when it comes to the Lord because I've been through so much in my own life to where I find my peace just resting in his presence. Even when I don't feel well, I've been going through for the last two weeks pain in my arm. Uh, left shoulder. That's why I keep praising God. I keep waving my arms. I'm like, you ain't getting the best of me, devil. You're a lie. Because God gets the victory. You know, and I just love to give God praise because he brought me too far to shut my mouth. <laughs> That's just how I am. I have to get it out. So I thank God for the musicians this morning too. My brother, God bless you. And man, just your blessing to the ministry, man. I really, really appreciate everything God is doing in and through your life. But I really sense the spirit of God is about to take you to a higher dimension in him, too. I feel the presence of God speaking that there's a greater elevation in the ministry God's going to call you to because of the obedience and the surrenders of your heart. God is about to elevate you to a higher place in him where there's going to be deeper revelation, where the rivers of heaven are going to open up before you and the power is going to fall even greater upon your life. That's what God told me to tell you. <clears throat> thank you, Lord God. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. For your presence, God, in this place today, we thank you for the anointing moving in the atmosphere. We thank you for the people who purpose in their heart to be here today, God. We just thank you, Lord God, for everything you have done thus far, that you be glorified continually, God, as we learn how to walk by faith and not by sight in the promises of your word that you, Father God, would get all the glory. Father, cause me to decrease that you increase, that I will speak your word, Father God, unhindered and checked by any demonic force, by the spirit of living God, as I go into the wells of the water, God, begin to bring forth the water of life, oh God, help Bring restoration and revival to somebody's heart, Father God, who may be heavy this morning, may be broken, who may be bound, oh God, that you would set them free by the spirit of the living God, that you, God, would have your God-like way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. I had took some medication, so my mouth was real dry today. But I'm not going to let it hinder me. Because God is still good. You know how those muscle relaxers are. They dry out everything in you. Boy, I tell you, 
ticket the night before still lingers the next day. But <laughs> 36 hours too long. <laughs> but God is so good. If you would stand as I read a few scriptures here in Jeremiah chapter 18. I started this on New Year's Eve, a message. Pressing with persistence towards your purpose. Pressing with persistence towards your purpose. And God took me to Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18, beginning in verse 1. It says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, verse 2, arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will call thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house. Behold, he was wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred. The vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as it seems good to the potter. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in mine hands, O Israel. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Tab that just froze up. That was a lie. But anyway, as I was pondering this message a few weeks ago, God began to show me a vision of a man sitting on a stool and he had a wheel in front of him. And on this wheel, he had various types of material to form a vessel. And as he sat there, the wheel, he began to press the pedal and the wheel begins to turn. And as it's turning, something began to form, which was the beginning of creating a vessel. So you have different types of vessels. You have porcelain. You have concrete. You have all types of vessels you can create with different types of material. So as this potter was making this formation of an image on the wheel, the scripture says God spoke to the prophet Jeremiah. We all know Jeremiah. He's He's the one that God says, you're going to go to the nations as a prophet, declare the word of the Lord that the people will repent. The same Jeremiah is the one that as he prophesied the word of God to different kings, he was thrown into a pit, was brought into a place of despair. You find that in Lamentations chapter 3. So as he was in this pit, he told God, God, I'm not going to declare your word anymore. This is his complaint. He was miserable because he's in a dark place. And God showed me something. A lot of times we get in a dark place and we begin. Testing. Okay, praise the Lord. So as he began to complain, he says something on the inside of him was like fire. Shut up in his bones. So in other words, when you have a relationship with the Lord that's embedded in the truth of God's word, doesn't matter where you are positionally. There's something on the inside of you. It's like a kennel that's burning with intense heat. And the thing about study the, the pattern of how to make a, a, a clay out of, out of, uh, out of a, a vessel out of clay, it requires water. It requires a wedge, and it requires heat. And the heat has to be heated at least 2,300 degrees in order to make this vessel become hardened where it can become what you want it to be. Which took me to the point I began to see God talking about the children of Israel. He said, can I not do with you as this potter did with the clay on the wheel. He said the potter, in the process of forming this vessel as it's turning, he's moving his hand with the wedge, and he's moving the rough edges out of this clay, and 
He's, he's causing it to begin to come to the image he desired in his heart. But something happened during the process. It became warped. It became messed up. It became unformable. God spoke something to me. He said, we as his people, we have to be appliable when it comes to God forming us in his image and likeness. If you're not appliable where God can put his spirit inside of you to form you the way he wants you to be, guess what happens? You become marred. You become marred with the things of the world because of the enemy is using you as a vessel of unrighteousness. So God says sometimes the vessel gets a crack in it. There's some porcelain uh, uh, vessels that have holes in it because it's just there for beauty. Then there's vessels that are solid where it has nothing can leak out of it. God says, I want you as my people to be a vessel that's so solid that I can pour inside of you everything I want to put concerning my character, my image, my DNA inside of you to where it won't leak out of you. But we get to the place within ourselves, we become leaky vessels. Guess how? I'm not studying the word of God. I'm not consecrating. I'm not praying. I'm not fasting. I'm doing everything I want to do to gratify this here. The fleshly man. The fleshly man is the thing that will prevent you from entering to your purpose. God says we have to keep on pressing. I talked about the pressing. The pressing is a word defined as an urgency. Something inside of you gives you an urgent desire that I got to get in the presence of God. How many folk got an urgency in here today for God to do something in your life? See, what it is, when you're urgent, you don't mind pushing stuff out the way. I'll turn off the television. I'll turn off the radio. I'll turn off the cell phone. I'll turn off the computer because I have an urgency to get into the presence of God. The problem comes in when you have a desire with no passion. It don't do no good. We can have a passion for the things of God, but no urgency desire to do the things of God. So when God began to speak to me, he says, what I want you to do is get in the place in yourself. You discard yourself. Pastor talked about New Year's Eve, getting rid of the baggage of garbage. We'll hold on to the junk. Matter of fact, some folks have some of it in their vessel. Just like this vessel's down here in front of the pulpit, you can take some of your garbage that you want to hold on to, don't want nobody to see it, so you hide it in the holes. God said, what's in your vessel? I'm trying to rush out of you to cleanse you and to purify, to sanctify you, that you become like I want you to be, a pliable. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly devour the word of truth. What is they talking about? I have to get into a place in my mindset, I'm going to get into God's word. I'm going to study God's word. I'm going to meditate on God's word. I'm going to dissect that word. I'm going to search the scriptures, find other references to go up this scripture till I get a revelation and understand that I can show myself approved unto who? God. Your approval already been deemed by God through Jesus Christ at the cross. But the problem comes in, I don't know I'm approved. How can I say before God, I'm approved if I don't know nothing about him? How can I say I love my pastor if I never watched him? How can I say I love the body of Christ if I'm not working in it? Because every joint supplies, every piece is together is to make of a body as a whole. And God says, as this vessel was marred while he was forming this vessel, he was taking the wedge, he's going just like this, as it's turning, it's turning. He's wedging the, the rough edges off, taking the debris out. He's calling stuff that don't need to be on there to be moved off. But what happens is, I'll go back and get those pieces. Because I want that stuff that's messed up. I want that stuff because I ain't ready to let go of it. I want that stuff that's going to corrupt me because I ain't ready to be, be cleansed. 
just like you wash your dishes. If you don't use no soap, is your dishes going to come clean? It ain't going to come clean. You're going to still have to breathe. You're going to have some mess on it. Why? Because I didn't use the proper agent to cleanse it. So the potter says, just like the potter, he said, he looked at the vessel, it was marred his hand, he said, you know what? Let me just grab all this stuff and start all over. That's what he did. He started all over to make another vessel. That means it was some messed up in the first one. So in order to make another means something wrong with the first one, right? So he took the one that was messed up, discarded that, said, you know what? Let me make another one. And he formed this vessel in order to get to the place of persistence. The urgency needed to be in my heart to be persistent, to know I have to keep on doing what God wants me to do, regardless of how I feel sometimes, regardless of how folk talk about me, how they backstab me, how they slander my name, how they persecute me, regardless of all this stuff. My persistence is my desire to keep persevering. So God began to speak. He said, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Said the Lord, behold, the clay is in the potter's hand. So are ye where? In my hands. Guess what? I belong to Jesus. He belongs to me. Because I'm in his hands. So if I'm in his hands, guess what happens? The devil cannot stop me from achieving my purpose. Because if I make my mind up and tell myself, self, today we're going to look into the mirror of the word. We're going to see ourselves in the image of Christ. Instead of looking at yourself Oh, I'm just miserable. I'm a wretch undone. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows my sorrows. Why? Because that's self-pity. Self-pity would take you to a dark place, get you in a hole where you can't see no daylight, so you're stuck. But God says, Oh, house of Israel, can I do with you what this party did with the clay? God says, I want to take you. I'm going to take out the mess in your life. I'm going to reform you, refashion you, fill you with my image that my presence can be displayed through your life. So everything that's in me, I dump it inside of you because I have a purpose to fulfill in your life. The devil can't stop you. The devil can only stop you if you give him the power to stop you. The pastor just read the word and Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. Where is your faith, O house of Israel? Where is your faith, O house of redeemed faith? Where is your faith, children of the most high God? Is your faith anchored in Jesus? Glory to God. So God says, it's an uncomfortable process. When I have to shake you, it becomes uncomfortable. And the reason why it's uncomfortable, because I got to put some stuff inside you don't want. But it's for your benefit. I got to put some love inside of you. I got to put some patience inside of you. I got to put some gentleness inside of you. I got to put some meekness inside of you. I got to put some long suffering inside of you. I got to put some forbearance inside of you that you can be temperate and control your anger. Why? Because it comes with the process. In order for God to create a vessel that's pleasing to him. He said, there are some things inside of you I got to purge out of you by the spirit of the living God. So when God began to change us, he said, I want you to do surrender. Just surrender. That's it. Just surrender. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. And mean it from your heart. Because a lot of times we say this stuff, we don't mean it. We're singing because everybody else is singing. But on myself, I'm stuck in a dark place. I can't see God do anything in my life because I'm blinded by myself. And God Come out of yourself today. Allow the spirit of the living God to begin to fashion you, to perfect you, to purify you, 
the thing about the clay is worthless until it goes through the heat. I love this part. When God spoke to me, it's a lot of times when God is taking us through the fire in our lives, we get stuck in a dark place, don't want to come out. So God says, I've got to put you in the fire. If God didn't turn the heat like shine right me, second and bend go, the fire was heated seven times hotter. God, says, I have to give you intense heat to burn off the ways of the world. If you never go through the fire, you'll never become pliable. You never go through the fire, you'll never be perfected. You never go through the fire, you'll never be changed the way I want you to change. God, you'll never be where I want you to be unless you go through the fire. Hallelujah. He said, when thou go through the fire, you will not be burned. I am with you, says the Lord. So if I know that God is on my side, when I go through the fire of life and trials and tests, I can stand sure of my confidence with boldness in the Lord God that I know you're on my side, God. Don't matter what they're doing around me, God. Don't matter where they're coming from to attack me, God. I know you're with me, God. You say you be a shield round about me. Come, I fear and trust you. I'm standing on the word of God, knowing with boldness that my God I live. For God, I'm willing to die. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when God promises that no matter what comes your way, if I gave you the remedy, in order to get to your purpose. Pastor just illustrated earlier about the shield and about the sword. God says to achieve your purpose, you got to have your shield of defense. You got to take the sword with the word of God. You got to stand on the word of God with power and authority, with all confidence and boldness, knowing that God, no matter what comes against me, I'm going to put on the full arm of God to guard myself all around me. Because I know if you be for me, you're more than the world against me. No matter what the enemy brings my way, having done all to stand, I'm going to keep on standing on the word of truth. I know that thy word is my shield and my defense. Thy word is my buckler. Thy word is my battle axe. Thy word is my protector. Thy word covers my bloodline. Thy word stops the enemy to strike. Thy word breaks the curses off my life. Thy word caused me to benefit. Oh, how God loves us. He daily loads me with benefits. Every day of my life, I can worship the King of glory. Cause he worthy to be praised. I made a choice a long time ago. Even though I may fall sometimes. God said, though a righteous man fall a seven times. The Lord will. The Lord will. The Lord will raise him up again. You don't have to stay down in the pit of this man. You can rise up in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because God is on your side. God is on your side. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Whatever betides you, God will make a way out of no way. God will open up the Red Sea before your life. I will from the heaven to open up and shout out blessing. God will deliver you. Sickness may come against you. God may rise in your life. But I'm going to stand on the word of God. Know me that my God is able to do anything but fail. I made a choice. I made a righteous decision. Because Jesus put it like this. If you decide to follow after me, you got to be willing to drink the cup that I suffer. got to be willing to eat my bread and eat my flesh. God said you got to drink of the blood of Jesus in order to be part of me. So you got to make a decision in yourself. Say, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to live my life as a pleasing sacrifice. Oh, to the hour. God, I give everything I am to you. That you'll be glorified in the midst of my life. Doesn't matter what I go through, God. Because though I know you are my son, you're leading me through the valley of shadows of death. I will fear no evil, but thou art with me. Thou rod and thou staff be comfort me. Thou be tell pain before me in the presence of my enemy. God, you're right there on my side. 
And if God is on our side, we got to learn to use our weapons. We got to open up our mouths. Use our weapons. Tell the devil it is written. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. Him only shall thou serve. I'm not going to follow you anymore from this day forward. Your plagues and your habits, your addiction, they don't have no more ground in my life. Today I'm trembling on the feet of the enemy. I'm stepping on his neck. I'm stepping on his back. I'm stepping on his head. Because I made a choice in myself. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I don't care what the devil trying to do against me. It ain't going to work. Because my God is for me. And he's on my side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the story. When Jesus was in the hole of the ship, he was resting. And there arose a storm. The Bible says disciples began to panic. They went and disturbed Jesus. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Don't you care that we're about to perish? Wake up. I thought you care about us. I thought you loved me, God. If you did, if you loved me, God, I wouldn't have lost my child. If you loved me, God, I wouldn't have lost my mother. I wouldn't have lost my sister. I wouldn't have lo lost my brother. I wouldn't have lost my children. God, if you love me, I, this would have never happened to me. For Jesus stood up, spoke to the elements, spoke to the sea. Peace be still. Even in the midst of losing, yet I still win. Because Paul says, I count all things as dung for the cause of Christ. For Christ I live and for Christ I'm willing to die. So even though I may lose someone, God gave me the memories to reflect on the good things that I shared with my loved ones. And to know they're in a better place, rest in the bosom of Jesus. So I got to keep on pressing. Even with a broken heart. Gotta keep on pressing. Even with a confused mindset. I gotta keep on pressing. Even when I don't know what to do. God said all you gotta do is put a praise on it. God I thank you. God I worship you. God I magnify you. God I exalt you. God I lift you up. Above all trials and tests. Over every circumstance. God, I glorify you because you're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy. You've been my doctor. You're worthy. You've been my lawyer. You're worthy. You've been my company keeper. You've been my confidant. You've been my savior. You've been my Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And God, I worship you. That's how you serve the Lord. With a made up mind. So it doesn't matter. What comes your way. I'm going to keep on praising him. I'm going to keep on glorifying him. Keep on worshiping him. Even I don't understand sometimes. There's only two times. To praise the Lord. When you feel like it. And when you don't. And I guarantee. Your flesh don't want to feel like it. Your flesh is going to do everything to resist and oppose. But you got to tell your flesh, flesh today, I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel like praising. But I'm going to shout on it anyhow. Because God has been too good to me to be quiet. Hallelujah. Won't you stand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we recognize that we're in the hand of the potter, the potter knows what's best for you. He knows what you need. He knows what you don't need. That's how much the potter loves us. With an unconditional love. It doesn't matter what comes your way. The potter says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even when it feels like I'm all alone. Sometimes I feel loneliness. Sometimes I feel depressed. But you know what? When those feelings come across me, 
I go put on my favorite worship song. But the spirit can leave. God said, you cannot stay here, depression. You cannot stay here, loneliness. Because my God promised me, no matter how I feel, he's still there. In my sad hour of brokenness. He says, I'm still there. I'm in that place. I'm in that place. I'm in that place. Everything you're going through says I'm right there in that place where nobody else knows what's going on behind your closed doors. If walls can talk, it's in every secret going on in your life. The camouflage relationship, the hypocrisy, the slander we do sometimes against one another. The walls could talk me to tell everything. But I thank God for his amazing grace because amazing grace saw a wretch like you like me and guess what he reached down in your pit of the spear he reached right there he picked you up said come on you can make it another step just follow my footprints I'm going before you I'm moving stuff out the way all you got to do is just let me do it. I know everything that's going on in your life. But I'm right there in that place to pick you up, to heal your brokenness, to bind up your wounds. Sure enough, you may have made mistakes. Sure enough, you walked in hypocrisy sometime. But guess what? I have loved you with an everlasting love. An everlasting love. A love that does not cease. That's what he's talking about. Is I know you. And guess what? I sent my son for you to pay the price on the cross for that area in your life when no one else knows about the burdens and the sorrows of your heart, the pains of tossing and turning throughout the night, when nobody else understands how I feel, my son, he stood in the gap in that place to bring you healing, to bring you deliverance, to bring you peace. He says, I am here says the spirit of living God to set you free to any willing vessels in the house today no matter what you're going through to lift your hands all over the room and tell God I surrender it to you I surrender it to you area I'm holding back I surrender to you that pain in my heart, I surrender to you. The hurt that I feel, God, I surrender to you. Because I just want to bless you, God. And let you have your way at the potter in my life. And guess what he'll do? He'll perfect the things that concern you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your anointing, God, that has the ability, it has the power to heal the broken hearts and to bind up their wounds, to regulate the confused mindsets, to break the chains and the shackles of sin in our lives. That as you mold us in your hand, God, you take out the stuff in our lives that shouldn't be there, God. And you give us an exchange from the Spirit of the living God the things that will bring you glory in this vessel 
Forgive us, God, for our sins, for our shortcomings, for our failures, from trusting you. And restore us. Revive us. Strengthen the weak. Help us to stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody give God praise. I was taking spiritual notes and what pastor was speaking about. And the Bible speaks on the potter's will, the potter's touch, and how he shapes and mold us. Jeremiah had to in grand experience of the process of creating a vessel. Everybody in this room right now is a vessel. But here's one thing that we got to understand today. That whenever I hear the sermon preach or whenever I think of the word in my spirit, I think about the old riddle that they will talk about Humpty Dumpty set on a wall Humpty Dumpty had a great fall all the king horsemen all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back, Dumpty back together again but I come to tell you today hallelujah the riddle places an egg as Humpty Dumpty but in real life, we all been Humpty, and we all been Dumpty, and we all have failed. Somebody need to give God praise right there. <laughs> that even when mama and daddy say, what's wrong, let me help you. We are not able to fix those broken pieces. But I know a God hallelujah, who's able to do a seating little bundle above all we can ask or think. But I'm going to tell you the difference between you falling and you breaking and something has to break. God is breaking something off of your life and you feel like Humpty Dumpty. Because you don't understand those broken pieces. When God said, look, I broke that off of you, brother. I broke that off of you, sister. I broke that off of you, mother, so that you can live. Everybody's standing up in the prayers aisle and we can go home. But God, Pastor Charles, I love that message. Every time I preach it, how, every time you preach it, every time I preach it, anybody else preach it. Because we need, we need that. We need that. Mm. And in those days, they didn't have power like we have. Somebody had to have been pressing the wheel while the potter had his hand on it. Ooh. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen. Because of the pandemic, we haven't been doing altar calls. But I want 
you that right where you're standing at to lift your hands right where you're at right there and those of you that desire special prayer yes you can meet me at the service and I will do a one on one prayer with you amen um, and while your hands are lifted I want you to lay your hands on yourself where it hurts at where you need God to fix it some of us need it right here in our mind because we're so bothered we're so troubled because if our mind is fixed our mind can wield our bodies hallelujah thank you Jesus father right now in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that you will touch every hand that is laid on himself herself that God that you would do a new thing right now God break those things off of us God those things that don't need to be there we recognize that you have made us the way you want us to be but there's some things that have grown in our lives that God that we need you to move today so God I thank you for moving them I thank you for restoring I thank you for hope I thank you for prosperity I thank you for increase I thank you God hallelujah for moving all those things sickness disease right now in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you for healing I thank you, God, for healing me in advance. Somebody say in advance. Hallelujah. Don't even feel it yet, but I thank you in advance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you. And I declare that right now that God, those hands that are placed on themselves, that the anointing that comes from your throne room will rest on them right now. Hallelujah. And remove all of the negative energy and toxic people out of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. God, it was by divine order that we are here and that we are watching live on Facebook. God, I thank you, God, for a new thing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody need to shout right now. It's already done. Come on, shout it like you already got authority. Shout it like you mean it. Shout it like you mean it. It's already done hallelujah even when I can't see him it's already done even when I can't feel it working it's already done now if you know that to be